Thanks everyone for being here. This is session two of what I'm calling my CEO series. Hi, I'm Lisa Forrest, Live Oak Bank, uh, director, co-director with my partner, Heather Anderson of Live Oak Bank's Sponsor Finance Search Fund Lending Division. Uh, we have Corey Gilkin, uh, CEO, owner operator of Washington Generators with us today. And just for the record, this is my second attempt at this. Uh, I'm a banker by day. Corey runs a generator company by day. This uh, this whole taping session is not our day job. So any technical difficulty is, is all on me. Uh, Corey, thank you so much for joining today. Um, and just to set this up a little bit, wanted to talk about transition for our searchers out there still in the process of, of, of finding a company. And even for our, our CEOs just coming into the CEO chair, wanted to you know, talk with our clients or, um, about their process and just share words of wisdom. So with that, Corey, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me, Lisa. Really appreciate you doing that. Uh, so I'd like to start out by you recounting a little bit of your search story. What, what was searching for a company like for you? Yeah, so I learned about search um, probably a year before I started search. Uh, you know, I had graduated business school back in 2014 and had moved to uh, the Bay Area to work at Apple and then subsequently worked at a couple different startups before I found out about search and then sort of got enamored with the, the concept of owning and operating a, a company. So I kicked off my search in the January of 2020. So just immaculate timing, uh, new Obviously, the whole world didn't know we were shutting down. I, at first, was forced to do my search as a geographic search, but from the wrong city. Uh, my wife still had to go into the office. And so, you know, we and had planned on moving. she was your then fiance, right? I mean, she was your then fiance. Was, so you've been through a couple life cycles there. Yeah. Yeah. She was my then fiance, but, you know, the ring was there. And so we knew we were moving together. Uh, and we knew that we didn't want to stay in the Bay Area and that it was just more difficult to operate and own a, a company in California, or at least, you know, all things are relative. That's what we were told. Um, and I had lived up here in Seattle before, so it made a, a good sense to move. But, um, but I started my search as a geographic search, but focused or living in the wrong city. Uh, and uh, And then COVID kicked on. And so you know, there was a couple months delay between owner outreach, as everyone knows, like things got things got a little odd there in the, the March, April, May time of 2020 and what to do. Um, I searched for a total of 18 months, but found, I guess, the company that I ended up acquiring at about month 13, about a month after moving here. Um, so I moved up to Washington and had already met the owners once, but um, really was able to make an in-person connection, brought my wife to the deal, which is important if you're buying from, I think, a, a husband-wife duo, a 50-50 split, like making that personal connection goes a really long way. And so, you know, being able just to jump on a plane and fly to a different city, I think that works for some deals. It just doesn't work for kind of the smaller SDE family-operated companies. and my humble opinion. Um, you're not going to always be the top dollar. So you need to make sure you make a personal connection and convince both partners that you're the right person. Um, anyways, transitioned um, in October 21, signed some, signed some documents and I've been, uh, been operating for about 10 months um, and it's been a good time. Great. And, and if I recall, Corey, you got close on another deal prior to the yeah. one that you acquired and with you, um, we spent some time looking at that one. And, and so you, I would consider it sort of a broken deal after you were into it for a while. Yeah, I had three broken LOIs and one that actually cost me money and we went through a lot deeper into. So yeah, I did, you know, have 30 plus thousand dollars of sunk costs on a deal. And it's just like, you know, you drag it out and I, I did drag it out. I played the classic searcher. Oh, just one more piece of information. One more piece of information will turn this thing around. And, and that information, you know, never came. And the writing was on the wall for about six to eight weeks. <laughs> um, I know that's kind yeah. of painful. And I, I, I only bring it up just because I think, especially now, uh, as we sit in 
August, almost September 2022. Uh, and with the economy in, a, in a kind of an inflection point, I think this idea of broken deals is going to be probably even more relevant now um, with maybe changes in the marketplace. So I just hopefully that was okay for me to share that those deals yeah. happen and they break for a reason too. And sometimes it's the best thing that you could have done. Yeah, I think I'm the statistic, basically three broken <laughs> LOIs before you find one, I think is like the exact average. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, and so Corey, why don't you maybe take just a minute here and just explain what your company does for context? Yeah, so we're a niche electrical contractor. And so, you know, when I was looking for a small business, um, being in the trades was interesting to me. Being able to provide a home service with some amount of reoccurring revenue was also interesting to me. And this sort of fit that bill where it is more of a business to consumer, um, but it has a pretty good component of, you know, 15 to 25% of our revenue is reoccurring maintenance contracts and relationships you build over time. And you get to sell generators twice to the same people when they come back to you 10 years later. Um, so that's that's nice. But yeah, we focus um, specifically on residential whole home generators and, uh, and partial home generators. But uh, we mostly deal with Generac and Kohler, which are the two biggest uh, installers in the residential space. We don't get into industrial and commercial. It's uh, it's just a different line of business. You know, if your grocery store loses power, then you've got to be there as the service provider, you know, within a couple hours because all that food's going to go bad. We don't have that uh, burden as a as a residential installer. Um, so you're not really um, competing in the same line as sort of like a traditional generator or electrical, you know, industrial company. Um, so, um, yeah, we're Washington Generators. We're the largest installer of um, home standbys in the Pacific Northwest. So we're by far the biggest, um, you know, from north of California. Um, and we're, we're growing. We've been growing 20, uh, 20% since 2017 and really more like 35% the last three years. Um, so it's been pretty great. Um, and good to have the tailwinds for sure. Uh, COVID actually helped the business uh, pretty substantially. There were a lot of supply uh, chain constraints, but the sellers had really planned for that. And I continue to, to make sure that we're properly planning for any future um, supply chain problems. So inventory is a, is a key component to our competitive advantage um, as we, you know, service our, um, our installers or our, uh, our customers. Um, what else is important? Um, yeah, I think I hit a lot of the highlights. Um, and with but, your uh, particular deal, because there was a supplier, uh, a key supplier, we spent a lot of time, you spent a lot of time as the acquirer looking at the supply chain issues. And um, I, I think you I think did a really good job of going into it with your eyes wide open. You know, the, unfortunately, in, in one of the things going on in, in with our economy right now, some of our searchers get into a, uh, the CEO seat, not realizing that supply chain was really something that they need to think about more. You had that where you knew that that was one of the issues for you. How did you go about um, thinking about supply chain concentrations and issues? Yeah, so I mean, I made sure to meet the suppliers about 60 days before closing. So what that did was really shift the timeline to signing the deal. You know, most people, I think, would delay signing their asset purchase agreement and getting all the legal stuff until later in the process, because, you know, as a self-funded searcher, it's it's on you to pay for the lawyer. So uh, but on this deal in particular, you know, we got it done in the first 30 days or at least the draft. Right. And we had signed everything and had come to an agreement and all the important stuff and then signed the documents. And the next day had dinner with the suppliers, told them about the transition, got them on board. Um, and so for all the key key contracts and relationships, made sure to have that meeting several, you know, I guess it was like eight, eight, nine weeks before we actually closed. Um, and that was pretty important um, to. You know, getting Lisa on board and uh, and everyone else is just making sure that everything was firmed and the the T's were crossed and the I's were dotted. So let's shift over maybe to a little bit of your transition story. Um, when now, because you're 
you're what are we eight how many months later are we now i don't know what month it is lisa it's like probably <laughs> august <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah so, I, I think we're at 10 but i don't know months. okay yeah. so <laughs> when i ask you to sort of recount when i say transition to you what comes to mind so when you're literally we signed the loan docs you're how, what do you want to say when i say tell me your transition story what comes to mind I mean, it's it's a little bit of chaos and it's chaos that um, you can certainly prepare for, uh, but you're not going to be able to solve every problem ahead of time. Um, I mean, the interpersonal problems, you're not going to be able to fix until you meet the people. Um, and so it, it really is drinking from a fire hose and and being prepared for whatever you can. I mean, the more you're prepared, obviously, the less existential the crises are that first 30 days. But um but yeah, you're you're still going to have problems, and there's the more you learn, the more problems there are to solve. So uh, yeah, as it just like stacks up, I think that's important. Um, you know, I knew we were on a short transition um, with one of the sellers, or so it's a husband wife duo, and so you know one of the first things that was you know needed to happen was to transition the wife out of the business, and so getting that job posting up, and and really a lot of things around people is what is like the first. <laughs> I mean, every business is people, but I mean, this is, you know, with electricians and those electricians being trained people, you know, you can't just swap them in and out. Um, and neither can you on the office side and small businesses. So much of the processes are uh, not well documented. So you just got to be be mindful of that. Yeah. You um, of all the processes in the company, if you're if you're willing to, to share some of that, what was one of the one process? Um, Gosh, those are my dogs. Thank you. Uh, what's one of the one processes that, you know, kind of strikes you as, wow, I didn't maybe understand it, realize it. I was, we talked about it with the seller, but wow, it took me X days or months to really understand that this was a nuance in the business. Did you have any of those things come up for you in transition? Yeah, I mean, we we talked about it, but one of the biggest impediments to getting a generator is outside of our control as a generator company. And so, um, you know, you really have to talk to the utility and then you have to talk to the local jurisdictions and get permits and licenses and and their permission. And so all of that stuff really limits your ability to grow at a pace where you might want to have aspirations to. So you know, you're like, hey, I sold a job, let's get it done to tomorrow. And it's like, no, 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 the city of Issaquah takes four weeks to to bless it off. And you just, you you understand that, but it's not real until you're actually the one like that's delayed and has like a gap in your schedule and you have a gap in your schedule. And that means either a guy's not working or that you need to find something else um, for them to do. And so that can compound. Um, and so, yeah, you you know it's a constraint. You realize it. You know it's part of your your thought process when doing the due diligence of being like, oh, you know, this is obviously generators need fuel. Obviously, you know, they're a major appliance, and you need permission. And uh, but it doesn't strike you at like a tactical level until you're, you're actually constrained. <laughs> until you're in someone's backyard figuring out where the yeah. thing's going to sit and how it's going <laughs> to get there, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and I think this is um, something that until you're in the owner's chair, you don't necessarily have an appreciation for. It's not like your seller is is not giving you all the information or is holding anything back. It, in fact, I think you said the seller was explaining that to you, but you just didn't, no way for you to have an appreciation on certain aspects. And every transition is going to have them. You just don't have an appreciation until you're literally sitting in your office figuring it out for yourself. Yep. Yeah, and there's almost like, um, I mean, it's good to know and it's good to know what you don't know and, you know, but um, until you actually face it and are and and should be a party to that conversation, it, it's, there's so much more to do during uh, when buying a company that, you know, making sure that you know the local jurisdictions laws about how, you know, you have to be five feet away from uh you know a neighbor's lawn is like that's so unimportant when <laughs> when trying to like get a deal done but on the second day of operating the company it becomes important when you're out there trying to sell something um to a, to a homeowner so 
Um, yeah, it's just, it's just, uh, you, you have to triage all your problems. And, and this one was just like, ah, you know, when I need it, I need it. And it turns out you need it right away when you're actually in charge. <laughs> Good. Um, so what was your first 30 days like, or maybe 30 to 60 days? What, um, kind of, what are you remembering about those days? Um, I mean, my sellers were very helpful. Um, you know, it's it was one of those things where we got a call from a supplier, um, you know, our major supplier, the day we were signing documents. I think I stepped out from like talking with Lisa uh, and took a call from a supplier and they offered to um, they offered to sell us like a truckload of generators. And it's, you know, it was great. And but I, I didn't have three hundred thousand dollars cash on me. Uh, surprisingly enough. Uh, and the sellers were just like, Hey, I think you're going to need this. And they wrote a check. Right. And so it was just like, Oh, wow. That's, that's amazing. And seven days later, I was able to, you know, fix that problem and get them paid back. But, um, so there was a lot of things where they were really gracious with, they knew that it was going to be an uphill battle and that they had 12 years of running the company. Um, and therefore, you know, they weren't going to like get us in day one. Now they, you know, we agreed to six months of transition and um, on the sixth month and one day they were no longer here. So, I mean, there's like, you know, make sure, <laughs> make sure you ask your questions while you have them. Um, but no, we still have a great relationship. And, Good. you know, I talked to them for 20 minutes yesterday and, um, and, you know, they still, of course, have a seller's note and financial interest in the success of the company, not just, uh, you know, a personal note. They do care about the people, of course, but uh, there are other things that make sure that they're they're happy and nice and same for me. Uh, you know, that's interesting that one of the things you recall was, you know, your sellers and that that whole transition there. Um, my observation over all these years, the seller relationship post close is probably one of the biggest wild cards. You just don't know how that's going to go. You sometimes you get to negotiate a, a really lengthy transition. And as the CEO, you wish you had um, negotiated half as much time. There's other other cases where you've negotiated a really long period and they're gone within two weeks. I think that's one of the, the most interesting parts of the diligence from the buyer perspective is just trying to gauge what to ask for and why, but then building in this wild card aspect of what really happens when you get in there. It's just really, it's just really hard to gauge, you know? So I'm glad yeah. that it sort of worked out for you. It was a redefining of roles and responsibilities for sure. I mean, and really drawing boundaries was important. Um, I mean, you know, everyone used to look to this person, that person to solve a problem. And now they have to look to you, which is great. And you can still seek advice from the, the sellers, but it needs to be you making the decision or otherwise you're just, you're just dragging along the process. Um, and so, yeah, there are plenty of stories of sellers you want out of there uh, and the ones you want to stick along. Um, you know, I, it's generators and electrical is a, is a technical you know, I'm not an electrician, so <laughs> there's some things that uh, that I still need help on, and um, and so that type of advice is is really helpful. It's great. So so far, do you have a defining moment of sort of you being the CEO, the owner operator, a defining fun moment or defining uh, rewarding moment? Um, you know, it's all sort of a blur. Uh, I wouldn't say there's like one moment that like sticks out as like, oh my gosh, let's high five and transition over. I mean, this is a, it's a daily, um, I wouldn't say grind, but kind of right. I mean, sure. um, it's really about 1% per week getting better. It's not about necessarily step functions in my opinion. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I sold like a generator in the first week, but that's great. I didn't get to see it installed until like two, three months later because we have a big backlog. So, you know, that, you know, high fives and everything when you go to the job and it's like, hey, I sold that one and I, I didn't ruin it. Uh, <laughs> um, so that's fun. Hiring people is always fun and seeing them succeed is great. You know, we're we're not like a work hard, play hard culture, but we are sort of like a 
work hard and let's go catch a soccer hockey game after work, but not like, uh, um, yeah, not like let's get on a plane to Vegas type people. <laughs> well, you're a banker. Yeah. That I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> I'll yeah. allow the soccer yeah. match. You all allow right. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll allow a Sounders game. Ter terrific. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, and also just sort of putting myself in your shoes a little bit when you're when you're actually able to be in someone's backyard by yourself without a technician along and you're actually doing the sales call like for the first time that must have felt pretty cool like you get back in your truck and you're like oh i just did that yeah i mean it's fun and uh, and this is like such a thing where or, i mean you can pick it up pretty quick but it's also very easy to sound stupid fast. So, you know, you never know what a homeowner is going to ask you. Um, and some of them are quite technical. Uh, you know, around here, we've got plenty of Boeing, Microsoft, Amazon engineers who you're, you're selling to and they're like, wait, what? I mean, tell me, <laughs> <laughs> tell me exactly how this works from uh, an electrical. And you're like, no, I'm not going to explain Ohm's law. Like, let's just move on. Uh, and uh, you don't want to paint yourself sort of into that corner and, um, and then get trapped uh, and lose a sale because um, you're not an electrician, right? That's that's not your job, and it's most homeowners understand that, right? I mean they they want um, they want someone to provide and to gain their trust and to sell them a service that other people have liked um, and will get behind your company. Um, they don't necessarily need you to, you know, ask them why their hot tub keeps turning off. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I love it. So hey, I wanted to switch gears for a minute. You're a military veteran, and um, I so appreciate supporting transitioning veterans any chance I get. For those that may be considering veterans, may be considering an entrepreneurship to acquisition transition, how, how did the military prepare you? Do, do you feel it did? And, and if so, in, in what ways do you, do you think it sort of maybe gave you a leg up? Yeah, I mean, I think um, I think leading our team is important, knowing how to tell, you know, to gain people's trust and to understand that, um, you know, as a leader, it's not always your job to do the job, but you should be willing to. So, right, you got to be able to get in the trenches and and do the hard work with people and also understand that you have a different role than, say, your enlisted counterpart or however you want to define that. Um also, I mean, you know, blue collar workers are um, very similar to soldiers and airmen and corpsmen, right? And and <laughs> and Marines. So, I mean, like it's a similar personality to some extent uh, with the electricians. And so um, it's an easy way, like you have to be able to to talk to different people in different walks of life. And, and I think being able to transition from talking to Lisa, the banker over to, you know, the other guy who's the electrician to the homeowner is all very important to being successful in both running the company, selling the company and, um, you know, uh, growing the company. And so, I would encourage any veteran to do it. I mean, I think there's, there's almost like, uh, you have the, you have the leadership, you have the common sense, um, and ideally the, the school and training to, to take this on and, um, call me if you need help. Agreed, 100%. Um, so on that growth note, one of the things that our buyers, search buyers are are doing, you're buying companies because you want to grow them. I, I know you've, you've kind of got a short, short time in now at, at, in that CEO seat. Is your idea or understanding about the growth opportunities in your company different, the same different and or the, the pace of growth and what it's going to take to get there. Do you have any sort of more nuanced thoughts about any of that when it comes to the growth story? Yeah, I mean, I'm a I'm an operations guy. You know, I came from working supply chain procurement at Apple and a couple of startups and similar roles in the army, right? And so you focus on efficiency uh, and let's say you make your crews more efficient. Uh, that's fantastic until there's no top line marketing, there's no sales. You need to focus on the whole funnel um, in order to keep the the wheel turning. And so that was an early lesson, um, thinking there would be unlimited 
demand. Um, there's not unlimited demand and being able to balance that is important, especially as the the spring and summer rolled around. Not only is it a um, counter cyclical business, right? I mean, we have got a season here in the state of Washington for when you lose power, but also the economy started to, to change a little and, uh, and weather has been quite nice uh, in the United States for uh, 2020. Um, so certainly some headwinds and you just got to make sure you're, you're balancing. So don't focus too much more on just the, you know, I'm a hammer, there's a nail. Let's, let's get this job done in two hours quicker. Uh, or let's make sure to fit, you know, X number of installs or X number of maintenances all into a day when really at some point in time, the, the, the job is, is capacity planning, but not always trying to reach peak capacity. Um, and realizing that, um, you know, was certainly a, a a lesson learned a few months into the owning. Well, and that's one of the reasons why, you know, from our perspective as, as being part of your deal team, we really want to make sure you can afford to pay us and yourself and the seller note all kind of as is. And then as you ramp up your growth plans, once you've got to understand what the landscape is, and then as you, you ramp it up so much the better, but we really want to make sure we're giving you ample time to understand what it is that you just bought and then to yeah. figure out how to grow it. Yeah. And I mean, my company is essentially a negative working capital company. So, I mean, I don't have like a worry about paying the bank back. I, my worry is typically how do I keep the guys working? <laughs> uh, revenue coming in is always, of course, great. But I mean, um, we've done quite well in our first 10 months. And so just understanding where all the levers are and uh, is, is really important. That's great. So thank you so much for doing this. Really appreciate it. I know you're busy. You probably want to be out in the backyard. Um, you know, slinging some generators here. If you just have maybe some parting comments, uh, the floor is yours and, and we'll we'll go out on, on your comments. Yeah, I mean, I think Lisa and I, we touched about this in a pre-meeting, which is just like, we talked about licensing a little and, you know, a big part of my purchase of this company was passing the Washington State Electrical Administrator's License and not being, you know, uh, um, rely, not having to rely on a seller or rely on a third party. So when you're getting into trades businesses, it's just realize what the local laws allow you to do and, and, um, and then making sure that you have a backup plan and a backup to the backup plan, because, you know, not every state you're going to have the ability to hold the license yourself, but I'll let, you know, realizing where you can get that, I think is important. Um, I guess for parting advice or something to say, I'd say, you know, thank you. Lisa, um, it was fun to work together and looking forward to working on the next one. Um, and, and yeah, you know, jump, jump full, full into it. I mean, there's, there's no point in sitting on the sidelines and search or in, uh, or in being an owner operator, you, you won't do well if you're doing it casually. Um, so that's what I would say. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, wishing you success and um, happy to chat with you about other other deals as they they come in front of you. Yep. Thank you so much. Bye, Corey. Thanks. Bye.